Yeah. So that's uh, one category of que questions we need to answer. Uh, and sensitivity report from Excel will allow us to do that. Okay. Number two is if the right hand side is changed, how much will the optimal value change? Now, what is optimal value? Optimal value is the objective function value evaluated at the optimal solution. So uh, if your objective function is talking about total profits, as in this case, then we're talking about will the uh, how much will the total profits be increased or reduced if we change uh, 2000 to 2100. Okay, so the, the idea is we are producing uh, X1 and X2s. Yeah. And if we have more iron, we may be able to produce more uh, more X1 and X2 and therefore sell them and therefore getting more profits, right? Our question, very specific question, is not about optimal solution will change or will not change this time. The question is, uh, how much more will our profits be from our original amount, our original optimized amount, right? So in the newly optimized amount, how much will our profit be? Or maybe it hasn't changed. Zero, no change. Or maybe the more I we buy, interestingly, surprisingly, we get less profit. Who knows, right? So uh, we need to answer those questions first. Now, uh, so, so that is disturbing the right-hand side and asking what will change in the output in terms of the objective function value. Okay. The, the other question is also that uh, we want to keep asking these questions, these two questions, uh, so that we can do a series of what if. What if this, what if that? What if we decrease the iron, uh, total amount of iron purchase from 2000 to 1900? Maybe to save costs, right? Uh, or maybe demand has reduced and we need to reduce. Suppose we reduce by 100 pounds per week and how much loss in profit will we experience? We expect loss, but how much? Is it a drastic amount or little bit? And maybe we can do that if it's a little bit, right? So we want to plan all these in advance. And that's the reason why we want to uh, do sensitivity analysis. And that's also the reason why in this session, uh, we want to look at how to use Excel to answer these questions. The way we try to get Excel to, to uh, produce a sensitivity report is basically to, first of all, formulate the model. So we have a model here, all right, and we have formulated it. And last week we saw in the video session that we can use the data ribbons, uh, what is it, solver. Right, so we run the solver screen, uh, click solve, and solver found a solution. Before we click OK to dismiss this window, we select sensitivity. And just before I click OK, you will see a new worksheet here. I want you to pay attention on the lower left uh, side of your Excel screen. If you click OK, a new worksheet generated by Excel, salvaging all the you know, temporary working values and uh, discarded outcomes and all that, uh, and gather them into a very useful sensitivity report will be produced here. Okay, so we see the sensitivity report here. Uh, the time produced is right now, and we have uh, this report. And we'll discuss a lot more about how to interpret this report in following video sessions. But right now, the idea is we can easily obtain the sensitivity report from Excel in this way. Okay, so the uh, question is why do we need Excel? Why can't we just uh, you know tweak the right hand side, tweak the coefficients? Uh, if we want to sell more, we change 10 to 12 and then click solver again. If we want to increase from 100 to 120, we changed it and then we can click solver and we can get answer, right? Will the solution change? Will the objective value increase or decrease, we can easily get them. The question is, why do we need sensitivity report? Why don't we just directly change the model, right? So uh, again, two answers. First one is something that we have alluded to. That is, we want to do a series of what if questions. All right. 
So uh, what if we change the right hand side uh, to 105? How about 110? How about 150? How about 120? And so on. So in each case, you are going to click solver. And uh, I'm jumping in steps of five. Maybe you want to jump in steps of one because every one unit on the right hand side represents one uh, ton or one thousand dollars or one million dollars. Who knows? So you might want to increment in in small steps and test the boundary a little bit. But that requires us to solve the model and keep clicking. I mean, it's quite a chore and not very productive. Uh, imagine because now we only have two constraints. What if you have twenty constraints to tweak them? And you wonder which one can we tweak, you know, so and by how much. And that would be quite a chore, quite a chore, a lot to explore, right? Even for a um, moderate sized uh, problem. And what to say when we, in commercial examples, we may have a thousand decision variables, a thousand columns, and a thousand rows of constraints. That's not necessarily uncommon. So in that case, you have a lot of combinations to explore. That's just not viable. And the second reason that we like to use sensitivity report is that when we click solver here to solve for a simple example like this, two by two, it's coming back very quickly, right? So it tempts us to just click ourselves. What if each solution takes three hours? So as I was saying, uh, an example in commercial model could be uh, 2000 variables and 2000 constraints. So if that click takes three hours, that will severely limit our ability to ask what if this, what if that, because every what if takes three hours to come back. You know, so it will be unproductive and uh, it, it just limits our ability to make decisions. So it would be nice if we have a sensitivity report to just, you know, oh, I checked, this is allowed, that is not allowed, you know, so that would be a very quick and uh, dirty but accurate uh, way to perform our scenario planning, our what if analysis, our sensitivity analysis. Okay, so here in this slide, uh, we see so, uh, some examples uh, of, of the sample screen and uh, a description of where the cells, what the cells are, objective function value, optimal solution. And there is a new term here talking about slack. All right, so the slack is very simple. The slack is just the right hand side minus the left hand side. The right hand side minus the left hand side so so the slack in this case is just six minus five we get one for the first constraint the slack for the second constraint and the third constraint are both zero so the slack is uh, to describe a constraint with the less than equal to sign we also have a similar concept of slack although now we don't call it slack we call it surplus so in this case, the surplus for the first constraint is 0 0.4. And the surplus is defined as left-hand side minus right-hand side. So, so for we say that for the less than equal to case, we use slack, and that's defined as right-hand side minus left-hand side. All right, so the, the choice of the word will relate to the sign of the inequality. Uh, never mix them. So a surplus in this case is left hand side minus right hand side. And we can't get them wrong because you notice that in all cases, slack and surplus, they are always non negative values. Right? So in order to get that, it is clear that we have to use the bigger value, such as in this case, left hand side minus the right hand side. And this can only occur with the greater equal to sign because uh, in satisfying the optimal solution, a feasible solution has to be there first and the feasible solution must satisfy all constraints all right so just terminology what is slack what is surplus and uh, quick example here if right hand side had been 115 then we have a uh, slack of 15 and for the second constraint a slack of zero but actually it was 100 so the slack for both cases uh, are zero all right, so that pretty much wraps up our first part to uh, understand the importance of performing sensitivity analysis and how to use Excel to pull out the sensitivity report. In the next 
few sessions, we will discuss in depth into uh, the interpretation and ap applications of these uh, very important uh, cell numbers uh, that Excel has produced in its sensitivity report. Yeah, it will be uh, very efficient and um, clever, smart to use these numbers in place of clicking solver multiple times. So I hope now you appreciate why this knowing how to use this report is very, very uh, efficient and useful.